Keyboards have been with us since the dawn of home computers and seem pretty unlikely to go away anytime soon. Although advances have been made in voice and handwriting recognition, the keyboard is still the fastest method of entering text for most users. So, this on-screen keyboard will light up any keys I press. This is a typical United Kingdom keyboard layout. Keyboards in most English-speaking countries will be laid out in a similar fashion. Above the keyboard there is a copy of Windows Notepad. The little blinking line here is called the cursor. This indicates where the letters and numbers I type will appear. So, the letter and number keys are fairly self-explanatory. Press the letter or number key that matches the letter or number you want to use. The enter key here, also known as the return key, starts a new line in some programs or a new paragraph in others. It's also used for confirming or submitting text you enter into a text box. It's sometimes called the return key because when you press it, it returns the cursor to the beginning of the next line. The arrow keys here are often called the cursor keys they let you move the cursor around when you press them. Though in most text editors and word processors you can't move past the end of the document without pressing enter again. When you want to delete characters there are two keys you can use. The backspace key here is the most commonly used one. This deletes the character directly behind the cursor. This is often the character you've just typed. The delete or del key here deletes the character that's directly in front of the cursor. Let's move the cursor back to demonstrate. Two other useful keys around this area are home which moves the cursor to the beginning of the line and end which moves the cursor directly to the end of the line. This can be considerably faster than using the cursor keys, especially on longer lines of text. If you want to type uppercase or capital letters, there are two ways to do this. You can hold down the shift key here or here, and then type your letter, or if you have a lot of capital letters to type, you may find it more convenient to use the caps or caps lock key. Pressing this key will usually light a small light on your keyboard to indicate that it's engaged. Now any letter that you type will be in uppercase. When you're done typing uppercase letters press the caps lock again to turn it off. Note that when you press and hold shift here or here, functions of most of the keys on the keyboard will change. Watch what happens to the number keys on my keyboard. They change into symbols. This is a UK keyboard and your keyboard symbols may vary slightly. The control keys and alt keys here and here are similar to the shift key. Pressing and holding control or alt also makes the keys perform alternative functions. These functions generally depend on the software you're currently using, though some functions such as control and C for copy are common throughout most Windows applications. Then there are the function keys, these F keys at the top of your keyboard. The software you use can set up special functions for these keys. F1 is often used for help. Pressing it may call up the help or the documentation for the software you're currently using. That concludes our tour of the keyboard. There are a few other keys we haven't covered here such as escape and scroll lock, but these keys aren't so commonly used. 
If your software uses them, the documentation that accompanies the software should indicate what they do.